going to start with something personal and awkward because that's what I'm good at. By asking you, where do you think I live? Yeah, two words, MP. Yeah, I live in Matinapangi. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, let's find that in the map. All right, so that's the Philippines. Matinapangi is in Mindanao. It's in Davao City. And if you find Jollibee in Matinap Crossing, go straight there and you'll find Matinapangi. And we're zooming in to our house. Yeah. You said it also our house and... <laughs> That's me. I'm not going to show you my house. Well, first of all, I apologize if the stick figure looks like it's wearing a skirt. I'm not implying gender roles on anybody. You can do anything you want. And yes, I edited my face there with using paint. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. Anyways, all right, so, well, we were not rich. In fact, we were poor. We were very, very poor, so we lived in a simple house in a humble neighborhood. In other words, we can't afford to live in a subdivision even though we wanted to. And so we lived in Matinapangi, which is semi-urban, semi-rural. You can still find a lot of trees there. It's not that commercialized, which means that the lot is cheaper. And you know what? It lo it's okay. It's fine because I just chose a son that is smiling and I'm also smiling there. Well, what you need to know about Matina Pangi is that if it rains and it pours, it floods. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and yes, I'm still smiling there because you know what? The flood was never more than three feet high. That's me for reference. Oh, I'm going to tell you my height. I'm only five feet. In the flood is never around three feet high. It's somewhere waist high. And you know what? If you're poor and the cost of living is cheap and you don't die, you're happy. <laughs> so that's me. I was smiling. But what happened is that six years ago, in Matinapangi, <laughs> that's me again. It rained a lot. And that's okay, because the flood was never more than three feet high. But no, <laughs> it flooded around 10 feet high. Why are you laughing? I'm drowning. <laughs> so yes, you can't see me anymore because, well, I'm not there anymore. And you know what? My little sister, oh, she's here. My little sister, who was only 13 years old at the time, she had to pull me up the roof to survive. Oh, yeah, true story. <laughs> hey, I'm smiling again because I'm in the roof. <laughs> but you know what? I remember myself crying. Am I sure? <laughs> I remember myself crying that night, and not because I was about to die, but because I was so happy. Yeah, I'm happy because at least I was on that roof with both my parents. They're not happy. And my little sister and me. And to give you context, that night, 25 people died. So you say, well, that's just 25. No, in Matinapangi, we've lived there for 11 years. And the flood was never more than 3 feet high. But suddenly, there's this 10 feet flood that killed 25 people. That turned the tables around. Apparently, living in Matinapangi could kill us. <laughs> so what I did the next day, of course, I told my parents, and I know what you're thinking, we should get out of there. But we all know that it's not that simple. We would have if we could have. And my parents knew that more than anybody else. I mean, who wants to put their kids in danger, right? So apparently, moving out is not an option. But there has to be something you can do, right? So what I did is I asked around town, and well, if you know me, you know how much I love mathematics and I love finding patterns in things. I asked if they knew about that flood and if they would expect it to happen again and when. And they all said the same thing. 
the adults. They said that it's from a ghost ship <laughs> that only emerges every 10 years, bringing with it souls from the netherworld. <laughs> and since a ship sucks for us, it brings water, which to us means very high flood. But you know what? I believe that. I was only 15 years old, you know, they're adults, they're supposed to know what they're doing. <laughs> so, or so I thought. Besides, I can already, the cover of the movie, I thought I could star on. <laughs> that's not so bad, is it? <laughs> that's, that's paint again. <laughs> okay. So based on a story of a ghost ship, they expect that flood to come every 10 years. Did it happen before 2011? Was the flood greater? Or do they expect it to happen again? <clears throat> Apparently, I had a lot of questions in my mind, but the answer to those, I'm not sure and I didn't ask. Because sadly, thinking about it now, I thought that it would need a miracle for anybody to answer my questions. And all I wanted to ask was, would that 2011 flood happen to Matina Pangi again? Would it suffice to just build higher walls, like my parents thought so? After that flood, they planned on building six feet walls around our house. If there weren't trees, it would look like a prison. Or do we really need to get out of there ASAP? <clears throat> Spoiler alert though, there is a scientific way of answering this. And that miracle happened two years ago. <laughs> of course, because I didn't die, I went on with life and I went to UP Mindanao and I took bachelor's degree in applied mathematics because of my obsession with math. And then I met Dr. Joseph Yacosta. And I ask, <laughs> and I ask permission from him to use that picture, okay? And at that time, he was my thesis advisor and was also the project leader of UP Mindanao Field Lighter One. And this is a multi-million project funded by the DOST. All right, so let me give you a little background on that. <clears throat> the Philippines experienced 20 typhoons in a year. No big deal, right? But then, so we have the Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards, or Project NOAA, and this is just the country being finally proactive in addressing environment-related challenges and disasters, right? And what they want to do is to provide Filipinos with science-based information using state-of-the-art technologies. And under these are nine programs, one of which is the Disaster Risk and Exposure Assessment for Mitigation, or the DREAM program. No one dreamed. Yes, they're specially talented with making up acronyms. <laughs> and <clears throat> so Project DREAM says, if you want to warn people about potential flooding in their areas, then we should make high-resolution 3D flood hazard maps. So Project NOAA says, okay, you do that, but how? Then DREAM says, I heard about other countries using the LIDAR technology. LIDAR, which is the acronym for Light Detection and Ranging, is a technology that uses pulses of light to measure distances from afar. Using LIDAR, we can measure the elevation of things like the ground, the trees, and even building. By sending out pulses of light and measuring how fast the light reaches the ground and bounces back, we will have we will have high resolution maps of the digital terrain and you can clearly see it in that picture where the river basin is and the mountains around that i mean look at the details on that map all right so using lidar technology <clears throat> we now know things like which part of this area is below the mean sea level, which part are above the mean sea level, among other things, which are essential in creating this flood hazard map. All right, so the, the dream says, 
we need high res maps and then they transitioned into the field lidar one program when they decided to use lidar technology to make those maps so far so good yeah but the philippines is huge so dream says why don't we have projects by region and they did that they have 14 projects led by the different sucs like UPLB, UP Dilaman, Cagayan State U, and of course, UP Mindanao. So UP Mindanao was the SUC assigned to map the 13 river basins in Davao region. Led, of course, by Dr. Acosta. <laughs> <clears throat> and this is where I come in. My thesis was uh, related to the LIDAR-1 project. Ooh, let me be nerdy for 10 seconds, please. All right, so <clears throat> this is where I come in. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, so. No, don't pressure me, Mr. Mike. Uh, so you see, to create these flood hazard maps, besides from the digital terrain, use, uh, product of, which are product of the LiDAR, we also need the data on the river flow, or the flow of the river. Yes, all right, and so we, we measure those so that they are turned into numbers and then those numbers are jammed into crazy high-tech computers with two huge screens making you feel like a pro and these computers know no lag, promise, all right? <laughs> <clears throat> However, okay, what the computer does is they run very sophisticated flood modeling no, mathematical flood models. And these flood models, like Ken said, they are not perfect. Not only are they not perfect, they're also very picky with the data. And it turns out that the data you input should have no errors. It's not very tolerant of errors. So what I did is, well, since there's always error because there's the human factor in the measurement, I will, pro I will propose I proposed smoothing techniques that optimally reduces the errors that best allows the important pattern to stand out. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> what, what I did is a uh, sneak peek. <laughs> so the dotted lines are the, are the erroneous uh, data and my product are those black continuous lines that have smooth curves. And somehow that's amazing. Yay, math is fun. <laughs> but you know what? So those data represented by the smooth curves, those are what will be used in the data. And suddenly these models are hopefully tolerant of this data produced, which we hope is rid of errors. Did you follow that? <laughs> yeah, you don't care. <laughs> All right, but of course, Sarah Kosa and I, they wa we weren't a duo. He had a team of people, they're very skilled, very talented, and they're very friendly. And together, they created flood hazard maps. One of which, and this is my favorite because I kind of work on this one, is the Padada Flood River Basin. And it's the biggest. So what you have here is the picture from the Google Earth, and then you have the simulated flood. Wow, I mean, look at, look at that map. So beautiful. And judging, of course, from the perspective of the sophisticated models needed to produce that map. I'm trying to remind you I'm a mathematician. We need to look right here in the bottom left part, and that's a legend. All right, and if we zoom that in, we have here a very helpful legend. Reference to a five foot six person, which I believed is Manny Pacquiao. And all you need to remember is that if you're in an area that is colored, and it's colored yellow, and that means you will experience flood, but that's not, not more than knee high. If you're in an orange colored area, you will experience flood above the knee, but somewhere below the neck. And if you're in an area colored red, you're gonna drown and you're gonna die. <laughs> Easy to remember. Yes. But of course, these are simulations, right? <clears throat> no flood, there's, huh. A flood will not look exactly like this. In fact, if we zoom in at Barangay Tanwalang in Padada, the you mean the field lighter one produces three different kinds of flood hazard map. 
we have a five-year flood hazard map, and this has a 20% chance of occurring in any given year. Now, how did I get 20%? That's just one divided by five. That's 0.2, so that's 20%. <laughs> Yay, there's math in my talk. All right, but what you need to see here is that uh, those symbols in yellow rectangles and uh, triangles, that represents a school. And apparently, the school in Barangay Tanwalang is in a flood-prone area. In fact, the, co the area is colored orange, which means that the flood is above knee-high and somewhere below the neck. And that's not good. But of course, there are floods with greater magnitude. For example, a 25-year flood hazard map, which has a 4% chance of occurring in any given year. And again, it's just 1 divided by 25. If you can see now, if this flood happens, the school is now in the red zone. And that's very, very bad news. And if you look at the 100-year flood hazard map, there's a flood with greater magnitude, which has a 1% chance of occurring in any year, the school is entirely in the red zone, which means there's definitely class suspension happening there right now. Now, just kidding. Don't, don't send your your child to school there, they will drown and they will die. <laughs> and you know what? They, they did not only that for Badada, they did that for the 12 other ba basins. And then they turned that over to their respective municipalities for appropriate action. Yay! So where do we get in the picture? The question is, do we have access to these flood maps? Or is this for public? for public use or consumption. Yes, they are. And that's the purpose of my talk. I want to introduce to you talipad.dream.upd.edu.ph. And in this website, you will have free access to all the flood hazard maps all over the country, created by the 14 different Field Lighter One programs. Not only that, you can, uh, you can download the layer file, and that's the editable version of the file in case you want more in-depth perusing for your research, or you can just download the map version of the file in JPEG format, for just for guidance. So please, please, if you download it, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your parents, tell your little sister. <laughs> because being informed is half the battle in disaster mitigation. And I'm not just saying that as a motherhood statement, it was literally a life or death situation for us. If I had access to this information six years ago, then who knows what or who I would have saved. But of course, the big question is, is it likely that the 2011 flood in Matina Pangi would happen again? Here's the catch. I told you there were 13 river basins for Phil Lider 1, right? The Matina Pangi happened to be the 14th. <laughs> In fact, they, the project ended last June 2017, and they said that they wanted to, but they did not have enough funds. But I heard the next week that UP Diliman, Phil Lider 1, is working on it. Yes, but they're not done yet. So yes, my questions are still left unanswered, but soon they will be. But what is important now is I have shown you science-based information, not from stories of a ghost ship. This is one of the ways science is, and mathematics is helping us advance as a country. And I think that it's about time we keep up, don't you think? Thank you.